In the field of medicine, research is definitely one of the most valuable skill set any medical graduate can have. Apart from helping the humanity on such a vast scale, research not only teaches you professional values, but is also viewed as a ladder to physician success. Hello, my name is Fatma Ahmed Qureshi and I'm a Medidia intern. And this week, we are going to talk about how to get a dedicated research experience as an IMG in the United States. So before getting right into the video, I would like to thank Dr. Tarek for his mentorship, due to which this video was made possible. So the objective of this video will be to make you understand what is a research position, why should you apply for research before residency, how would you apply for research, what are the different methods of applying for research. For example, there's a formal application process and then there's a backdoor application process. Then we're going to talk about how does the research actually help you in the career. And lastly, we're going to talk about what mistakes to avoid while applying for a research spot. So let's start from the beginning. What is a research position? A research program is a professional network of scientists conducting basic research in different specialties. Every educational institution has different research programs and offer various positions. For example, you have research assistant, you have fellows. All these make up a team which research on a specific topic and the different departments. So for example, Stanford University has its own research department and Harvard Medical School has also its research departments in various specialties. So we can see that research is definitely an important part of any medical graduate's career. Therefore, it recurs at different timelines for different people. Now, depending on those timelines, we can classify the researchers at mainly three types. One is during medical school, that's mainly for AMGs. The second type of research year is before residency, and the third type of research years are during residency. I will tell you why is it so helpful in your career later, but first I'm going to talk more about the type mainly discussed in this video. So the question is, why should you apply for research before residency? So as you can see here, this is some data that is sourced from NRMP charting outcomes from IMG. So as we can see here that if we look at the data for all the specialties combined, the difference between the research experiences of non-US IMGs matched and unmatched is not that much. It's approximately equal. But when we go for more competitive specialties like neurological surgery, we can see that gap between the matched and unmatched IMGs in the term of the research experience it widens a lot. Those IMGs who matched had way more research experience than the unmatched IMGs. Similarly, we can see in the general surgery, we have the same gap recurring again, which shows that you need considerable research experience to land into a highly competitive specialty. So if we look at the benefits of doing that research year before the residency, we can see that number one, it is really helpful for your residency application. Research experiences and publications are crucial for highly competitive specialties. You cannot think about applying into a highly competitive specialty before having a considerable research experience. However, if you don't want to go for a highly competitive specialty, it's still going to help you a lot in your residency application because it's seen as a major plus point in CV for all of the specialties. So another reason for doing research before residency is that it's a good timeline. It's a better time to dedicate entirely to your research. So it's definitely not possible for IMGs during their medical school. The, for AMGs, they definitely take their uh, research gap year and then they definitely take their time off the med school and then they put in all their time into the research, get some publications out of it and then rejoin medical school. This is not feasible for IMGs. And during residency, doing research and the job, it's harder to manage both simultaneously. It could result less productivity and that's definitely the last thing we want for our research positions. So how should you apply for research? There are different ways of application. Number one is the formal application process. That means that we are going to go to the websites, the official websites, which have the postings for different research positions opening. Those are the official spots. So the next way of application process is backdoor application process. That is more common, definitely, and it involves contacting other researchers in your area of interest. And you ask for collaboration or guidance through their publications. 
I am going to talk about this later. And the third and the last way of application is through connections. So for example, if you've done some electives or observerships, uh, after doing that, you will write back to your faculty residents you worked with, and you would ask about any research positions or any collaborations that are available for you. Or say you have a colleague who has left a research spot, you can ask if they can recommend you for that research spot. So that's another way. So this is how the adverts for the ap formal application process look like. These are definitely fewer spots because you are competing with everybody in the entire world, including the U.S. medical students. So your CV needs to be very good for you to secure as a research spot. There are different universities, for example, NIH, UCSF, they definitely offer some research spots. They can be paid or unpaid. So you have to check out all these. As you can see, there are a lot of requirements for you to apply into these application process. Next, we're going to talk about the backdoor application process. So for that, the first thing that you need to do is go to Google and get the rankings of medical institutions for research. This will give you a better insight for what institutions are where in the ranking in terms of the research. So let's go to the US News, uh, Best Medical Schools in 2022. Next, we find the Research tab of the website, and then we have the entire list. That lists all the universities that have the great research programs. So as you can see, Harvard University, New York University, Duke University, these all have very great research programs. This is because most of the funding goes to these universities, and the higher the funding, the higher the chance of publishing the quality work. This is all available on US News. So next thing you need to do is select a certain institution that you're interested in. For example, we say we're interested in Harvard Medical School. So we go to their website and then we go for their research department. For example, I'm interested in cardiology. So I will go to the cardiology website of Howard and then I will go for the faculty. So looking at faculty, we have a list of accomplished professors. So next thing we need to do is browse through the faculty's research work by searching their names on pubmed.gov. Look at what faculty has published and if you find anything interesting from it, you have to read it. So let's say I select this uh, particular professor's name and I put it on PubMed. So I find a research article by this professor, so I give it a read and I find something that interests me. I am definitely going to highlight it and then I will look for the email in the paper or from the department website. After that, I will be sending them email with my CV expressing my interest. So my email is going to be something like, Dear Doctor, Miss, Mr. Last Name, my name is Fatma Ahmed Qureshi, I am final year student, graduate from XYZ. So I'm going to be talking about myself first, that what is my USMLE status, what is my score, and then I'm going to talk about their research paper and what really made me interested in their research. So after that, I'm going to be requesting if there's any research spot or even an unpaid research volunteer spot. So I'll say something like, if you have any opening in your lab, if not, do you think you can refer me to somebody who might have an opening? And then you would want to talk about how you want to expose yourself to the research methodology in USA then thanks and all those salutations. So here are some sample emails to refer to if you want to go for a formal application template. So the main thing is that you have to send them an email with your CV expressing your interest and then you can add any questions or comments if you have any. Then ask them if they have any research spot available. If not, then you can be a research volunteer the first step is to get their foot in the door. Then the next steps will usually fall in place consequently. So for writing the emails, there are some tips and tricks. Number one is that make sure that it is concise. Busy faculty members and professionals read emails quickly. A long detailed email, no matter how well written, will often get ignored. So save the details for follow-up emails or conversations. Number two is that maintain formality. Always maintain a formal tone or use formal language in an initial email to faculty or professionals. Number three is that always begin the emails with appropriate salutation. Never ever address anyone with their first name, always address with their last name. Next tip is that be sincere and genuine. 
false flattery will not get you so far. So only reach out to the faculty that you have genuine interest in working with. Never exaggerate or misrepresent your interests. And the final tip is be patient. Do not expect to get an instant response. Most commonly, it takes around 1,000 emails to get two or three positive responses. So if you don't send out 1,000 emails, it's very tough to find something. 50 or 100 emails are usually not enough. Everybody is busy, but you need to send out 900 to 1,100 emails just to find a research spot. So let's say you have done all this process. What's next? You need to know about the types of research positions. There are paid research positions, which are sometimes available. You can get it on J-1 visa. You might be able to get an H-1 visa also if you do research and end up publishing 10 to 20 papers. A lot of people use this as a reason to get a higher skill visa such as a green card. So rather than going through the usual route of finishing residency, fellowship, jobs, and then applying for a green card, you can end up getting green card before residency. So automatically, next type of research position would be the unpaid position, which you can do with a B1, B2 visa. Most of the people who do not have a visa, they start with an unpaid volunteer research, at least for 6 to 12 months, and if they do good, they are eventually able to secure funding or get a paid position in some other university. Also, stronger your CV gets, the easier it becomes for you to find a paid research spot. So financial considerations, Will it be dependent on the particular applicant? Next question is, does research really help? All this effort that you do, 900 to 1100 emails, facing rejection, to just to find one or two research spots, is it really worth it? And it is. Number one thing about research is that it shows productivity. By publishing papers, abstracts, and giving presentations, it means you have been directly involved with the field of your interest, and you have studied in depth like no one else has. It is a very important and helpful tool. If you go unmatched, backup is research. So research help cover all these deficiencies and help you make up for them by making your CV strong. Next thing is that many people match at the place where they did their research here. So it is imperative to do it somewhere where the student could see themselves for residency. For example, if I want to secure a residency job in an XYZ institution, I would automatically apply for a research spot in the same institution. In that way, when I will be appearing for interviews for residency, a lot of the faculty would already know me. Third benefit is that obtaining research experience before entering residency will give you a preview of what to expect and more experience in that field. So do research and eventually you will succeed. And this goes a long way. Whatever you learn from your experience, it helps you in your residency, fellowship, and even as an attending. The fourth benefit is that with research, you definitely develop close professional connections, which really help you in your career. And last but definitely not the least is that research will definitely help you in finding new talking points for future interviews. A lot of program directors and interviewers are directly interested in what kind of research what you did and they definitely ask in-depth questions about that. So it's definitely a plus point if you are well aware of all the research experience that you have done. Last, we will talk about the mistakes that we should be avoiding during this entire application process. Number one mistake that people tend to do is relying on people for promising you the opportunities. Do not chase the people. You have to create the opportunities yourself. There will be a lot of people who will promise you a residency, a research spot, uh, give you a lot of guarantees for it, but you don't have to take their word for it because no one is really capable of actually pulling that off for you. You are the one who has to make the actual effort for your research spot, so it's better to trust in your own efforts than other people. Next big mistake would be being lazy or non-productive during the job. It's not just enough to spend a year or two in research institutions like John Hopkins, Stanford, and not producing any publications, abstracts, or presentations. Instead, that gives an impression of a lazy and unmotivated person, that like you're good for nothing, that even after spending so many years, you were really not productive. That's why it's really important to not just spend the time in research, but also show productivity by publishing papers, abstracts, and giving presentations. And it is really possible if you are directly engaged with your lab work, if you're contributing like a real team player. 
The last mistake is giving up on a whole process on the first attempt. As you can see, it is a very patient process. It definitely requires you to keep yourself steady throughout the process. So you have to stick with yourself and definitely pull through. So like we say on this channel, never give up, never lose hope. Leave your comments down below and questions so we can answer them. I hope it is very helpful for you. Thank you so much.